Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze and interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. This is Ange coming to you live from our studio in the city. And we're taking you back in time yet again to Sundance. This time we're talking to the beautiful casting crew from The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, which is streaming now on Netflix. Aaron and I are joined by John Wildman with the festival Daily Buzz, and we are interviewing Chiwetel Ejiofor, who is the director and talent, William Kamkwamba, who's the author and subject of the book that the film is adapted from, Aisa Maigai, who's talent, and Maxwell Simba, who is also talent. He plays a young William Kamkwamba. And this is such a beautiful, inspirational film. So enjoy the interview, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Festival Daily Buzz with Bitch Talk Podcast. My name is John Wildman. I'm here with my co-host from Bitch Talk, Aaron Lim and Angela Tabora. And this segment, we're going to be discussing the film Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, which is a Sundance movie. We've got a full team here, and we want to go down the line and have everyone introduce themselves. And uh, let's start at the end. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Maxwell Simba, playing William Kampuamba. Hello, my name is Aisa Mega, and I'm playing Agnes Kampuamba, the mother. Hi, my name is Chiwetel Ejiofor. I directed the film and play Triwell Kamkwamba. Hi, my name is William Kamkwamba. Um, I'm William Kamkwamba. <laughs> 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 I'm your William. <laughs> I'll be being me. <laughs> <laughs> even, even, even on the radio, Chiwetel is directing. <laughs> It's in his blood. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, And, of course, we always start these segments um, letting our director, letting our filmmaker uh, introduce the film to our listeners. So, Chiwetel, tell tell us about the film. Um, So, the film's called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, and it tells the story of uh, William Kamkwamba when he was um, a a young man at 13, who, um, with his family and his community, was experiencing a famine in Malawi in uh, 2001-2002, as a result of which he was um, was removed from school. His family couldn't afford to pay any fees. And um, but with his sort of ingenuity and tenacity, he snuck back into school. He found a textbook, a physics textbook, and a book called Using Energy. And on the front was a (coughs) picture of a windmill. And uh, so he began this process using junk that he found in sort of locally that he sourced in the area uh, to start to try to build a windmill that would eventually (coughs) irrigate the land and uh, and remove the threat of famine from the region. Well, of course, we are all great fans of your work as an actor. Um, in fact, uh, uh, my two co-hosts and myself um, are going to keep ourselves from asking you about each film that we really love. Um, <laughs> but what I want to hear about why you chose this as a film to direct. Well, that was a kind of lengthy process. I first of all read, um, uh, you know, William wrote a book about his experiences um, with, um, uh, he co-authored it with Brian Miller and I read that book. It came out about 2009. I read it that year or the year after. And I was completely stunned by the, um, by the story. And I felt that it had so many interesting and important resonances, uh, not just in terms of the uh, immediate issues of, um, of telling stories about, um, about Malawi, about Africa generally, that had a very strong positive energy to them and, uh, and lived in the solution to some of the, the problems and the issues that countries can face, but also in the kind of wider issues, um, which issues about climate change, about deforestation, about uh, economics. You know, the nature of this famine was an eco- economically driven famine, the price of grain just going up in unregulated markets. And so there were lots of things that were impacting us I think globally that I thought were really r- resonant and important points to kind of make and and so I started to adapt the book on that basis and then through that process which took quite a long time you know I um I was so kind of inside the material I'd went I went and visited Malawi on a number of occasions that's where I met William um you know for the first time and uh, and t- t- he took me around uh, the village and uh, Wimbeke, the wider region of Kasungu. And, um, you know, and just over that process, it became clear that I was kind of so inside the material that it made sense to not hand this over to somebody else to direct, but, um, but to direct it myself. And, William, when you have someone uh, take on a project like this that is yours, a lot of trust 
there's a lot of trust there. And, and can you talk about that relationship and, you know, and, and how it progressed um, with you and Chiotel? Um, it was like a lot of like trust, yeah, of course. And the, um, one thing that I really like, like the, it's like Chueto coming to Malawi to talk to me, like to be able like to learn more about like the story, rather than just like talking in the phone uh, to know how the story was. But meeting everybody who was involved into like that story, talk to my parents, uh, visited all the area that every piece of the story uh, took place um it was really like great because it was more of like opening up that i understand he understand better than just um learning everything from the book but also apart from learning things from the book that i could lot with brian miller but also being able to uh, to come to malawi uh, to be able like to learn more about the story and I, I wanted to add, um, what a time to talk about education and science and the environment and reading. Can you talk a little bit about that importance and what that means right now to our political society, especially in America? Yeah, I mean, I think that there are so many kind of th um, th thematic areas of the story that are really resonant and important. And of course, one of the major things and one of the major themes is the importance of education and access to education. And that is something that um, obviously revolutionized William's experience, you know, when he was able to finally get some access to the, to um, to these books, and and that is at the basis of the story, really, of how to develop those ideas. Uh, um, and we live in a in a world where there is, for so many people, this limitation on potential, mm -hmm. and uh, and this limitation on on education, and that's the area that I think is is just vital in uh, in achieving growth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maxwell and I said, let's let's talk about being on the set, and let's let's just pretend like this guy sitting next to you isn't actually sitting next to you, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and 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 let's talk about what, what what he was like as a director working with him. Oh, you want me to? Yeah, yeah. Maxwell is pointing. Maxwell wants you to lead off. Saying that Chiwetel is a machine. He wakes up at four, and he's always on goes to the gym, <laughs> then he spends the whole day directing the movie, directing the actors, being an actor, and at night, because the editor was, was with us, he was editing the movie until maybe 1 a.m., and so on, every day. And um, apart from that, the, that was a magical experience to shoot next to William Kamkwamba's house, shoot next to his parents, his relatives, and um, Chiwetel was very focused, and he has a an ability to bring people together, and it was fantastic. Okay, Maxwell, I bought you some time. <laughs> uh, so I would say working with Chiwetel was really amazing for me. First, because uh, he's an amazing actor, and adding also to that is that uh, other than being my father in the film and my director, he was also a friend outside set. And uh, what I really loved about working with him was that he knew what he wanted and he knew how to get to what he wanted. So he was very precise on what he was going for. And that for me got me thinking that I really need to nail it because <laughs> if he knows what he's going for, then I got to get him there. Okay, okay, <laughs> got a little extra pressure there. Can tell how was it working with yourself? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Best director I ever worked with. Absolutely amazing. I mean, finally, I thought finally. <laughs> <laughs> but, but honestly, you know, they're, 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 it, you know, to 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 uh, actually act in something that you're directing, um, splitting that focus is a challenge, and not everybody accomplishes it well. How do you, how, I mean? And and you've worked with a lot of fantastic directors. So going in, how did you kind of prepare yourself, buffer yourself, going, okay, I've got to operate on a few different planes here. Yeah, I mean, it is it is a tricky thing to kind of balance. There's no doubt about that. Um, but the, um, uh, you know, I think that the, the first thing and the only thing you can do is really surround yourself with people that you really trust and that you really rely on uh, that can really help you and guide you through the experience. You know, I spent a long time developing the film with Andrea Calderwood and Gail Egan. Uh, and Andrea, as a producer, was both, you know, was out there the whole time and, um, and was uh, a, a, a major support system for me as I would try things and do things and reference things with her and judge them. I didn't really want to have anybody who would specifically inform um, me about my performance or something, but to be able to sort of talk about it in broad terms and to see if, if scenes were working and how to influence scenes and how to change them, um, directions to push them in, you know, and then 
um, you know, having Valerio Bonelli, the editor, our editor out there as well, and Dick Pope, a fantastic cinematographer, amazing cinematographer, um, really just started to create an environment, you know, and then to work with terrific actors, um, where you feel that you can try things and you can um, um, uh, you can explore, uh, and there's a bit of there's a bit of safety there, you know. Um, so that was that's the I think that's the kind of key to it is to feel secure. Um, and you get that security through the people that you're collaborating with. And I just wanted to touch on, um, William, how do you feel about this film and how it turned out? Have you seen it yet? Yeah, I, I've seen the film and I'm very excited about it um, because one thing that I feel about the, the film, when I was writing the book, I wanted to reach more people um, mm -hmm. with my story. So I think the film is going to even like help that more uh, that goal of like reaching to as many people as possible. The people that didn't have a chance to read the book, they're going to be able to see the movie and they can be inspired or they can learn um, a lot from the, from the movie, from what I did. The one uh, star that's not here today is the dog. Can we talk about the dog a little bit? <laughs> and were you attached to the dog in the film? Yeah, I was very much attached to the dog in the film. Yeah. Uh, we used to have, uh, when, when I was not shooting, we'd have some time off and get to interact like on my off days mm -hmm. and everything. And it was really interesting for me to finally get attached to the dog yeah. such that uh, we don't need to do tricks when you're shooting. It's just a mutual attachment that oh. we understand I felt each that. Oh. what yeah. you're going for, really. Yeah, I don't want to blow it for anyone else. Mm -hmm. But, man, <laughs> whew, yeah. <laughs> And, we, and we're going to have to wrap up pretty soon. Um, but we are at the Sundance Film Festival. And she would tell this kind of thing, this is old hat for you. You know, you're at film festivals, you're doing stuff. Not necessarily for the other three here. So how have you kind of prepared them for what this experience is going to be? Or have you? Or are you just bringing it on them? I mean, I haven't in the slightest prepared anything <laughs> for anything. Getting up at four in the morning and going to the gym. <laughs> I'm just watching everybody experience all the, the, the mayhem out here. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Well, fantastic. Well, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a wonderful uh, of, a film to, to have out there, let alone just the, the accomplishment of the film. It is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind at Sundance. We've had with us the director, uh, writer, um, and in the cast, Chiwetel Juofor, uh two of our cast members, Isomega and Maxwell Simba, and the author and subject the film is based on, William Kinkwamba. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you for listening. That was our interview with the cast and crew from The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, streaming now on Netflix. Check this film out, guys. If you ever question your power and your ability and, and your effect on this planet, watch this film and it'll inspire you. Uh, and don't forget to go to bitchtalkpodcast.com for all of our past episodes. Uh, follow us on our socials. Rate, review, and subscribe. It really makes a big difference when you do that and it only takes a second. We really appreciate it. And also, if you haven't heard yet, we're partnered with BFF FM. You can now hear us as part of their Monday morning lineup from 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Just go to bff.fm to listen in. And finally, I'm proud to announce that our next episode will be with the one, the only, Emilio Estevez. You may have heard of him, talking about his new film, Public, that's coming out. Emilio! It's awesome. Bitch, please! <laughs>